Hello, my name is Liv Olson, and this is my developmental history project. I was fortunate enough to grow up in a privileged and wealthy family. My parents made sure that I always had enough food, water, clothes, and sleep. I always knew where I was going to lay my head down at night. My parents made sure that Maslow's physiological needs were always met. I spent my entire childhood and young adulthood in the safest city of Illinois. We never moved out of Campton Hills. My dad was able to keep the same well-paying job throughout my whole life. This amazing job allowed my mom to stay at home and take care of my older brother Andrew and I. Unlike many families, finances were never a huge issue in my family. We were lucky enough that we never had to worry about our safety or security, which is Maslow's second tier. I grew up in a non-traditional Christian and conservative house. Our family would spend at least two days a week in the church. However, my parents would never let politics or religion become a big part of our life. Throughout my schooling, I attended Belgram Elementary, Thompson Middle School, and St. Charles East High School, which are all among the top-rated public schools in the state of Illinois. However, the part of my ecosystem that affected my life the most was the fact that my dad would be out of state working for four to five days a week. My dad's wonderful job allowed us to not have to worry about finances, but it left my mom, brother, and I alone. My dad missed a lot of important events, holidays, and birthdays. To this day, my dad has never been able to be home for the first day of school. My parents have completely shaped my macro system. My parents have always taught my brother and I to work hard for everything we have. Both of my parents grew up in difficult financial situations and worked their whole lives to get my family into a comfortable position. Ever since I turned 15, I've had a job and in some way supported myself. Everything that we have in life has to be worked for. My parents have also always taught me to be loyal and accountable. They have taught us to support each other and always be a shoulder to lean on. So when one of my best friends would be made fun of for wearing a Packers jersey to school every Friday, I took it upon myself to buy one and wear it with her in the hallway. My family was and always will be a part of my microsystem. They are the people that I trust and love. They have taught me every lesson and have supported me through my best and worst times. No matter what, I know I can always count on all of them. They have shaped me into the person that I am today. I have always felt a sense of love and belonging, which is the third tier of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I began my life in Piaget's sensory motor stage. I explored the world around me through direct motor and sensory contact. During this stage, I was always found smearing food all over my face. Unfortunately, many birthday cakes were ruined by my curious hands. My actions could be explained by the fact that I was in Kohlberg's first stage of development. At this time, I didn't understand the difference between obedience and punishment. I wasn't grasping the fact that my negative actions would result in a punishment. So when I would ruin a perfect cake, I didn't think there was any sort of consequence. While an infant, I was also in Erickson's first stage of development. At this time of my life, I was dealing with the differences between trust and mistrust. The first person I trusted and befriended was my brother. Andrew became my best friend. According to my parents, I relied on Andrew for everything. He would be my voice and hands. So when Andrew didn't trust that big old man in the red suit or that ginormous bunny, I knew there must be something wrong. As I moved on to my early childhood, I moved into Erickson's second stage of development, and I learned the difference between autonomy and shame. Here is when I decided that I didn't have to rely on Andrew for everything. He was my best friend, but I wanted to become more independent. I learned how to use my own voice and get my point across all on my own. During this time, I became well aware of my own self-interest since I was now at Kohlberg's second stage. At this stage of my life, I was living a life the way I wanted to. I didn't understand that my parents had loads of other things on their plate. All I knew was that if I cried it hard enough, I was most likely going to get what I wanted. This makes sense because I had just entered Piaget's second stage. I was experiencing egocentrism. I struggled to see anything from somebody else's point of view. As I entered Erickson's third stage of development, I began to understand the difference between initiative and guilt by exploring the world around me. I enjoyed making obnoxious music with my brother and building Lego towers twice the size of my body. I spent my free time baking alongside my mom, throwing the ball around with my dad, and biking around the cul-de-sac with my brother. During these years, I began asserting control and power over the environment around me. I felt like I had a purpose in the world. During this time, I had also just begun my time in a Montessori school. I went to Bridges Academy through kindergarten. Montessori follows the idea of experiential learning. We were always found at a museum, farm, mall, forest, or a park. I vividly remember everything we learned in the classroom was applied to the world around us. Montessori school also allows a student to experience one-on-one -on -one time with a teacher. I always trusted and loved Miss Sylvia. Throughout my time in Montessori school, I was able to expand my knowledge and learn to love learning. I still remember many of those lessons Miss Sylvia taught in her homey and welcoming classroom. As I became an elementary student, I started to understand the difference between industry and inferiority as I entered Erickson's fourth stage of development. Here I started to learn how to cope with different social and academic commands. I started to create long-lasting friendships with many of my parents' friends' children. Ellen 
in particular, has been my best friend since kindergarten. We became almost inseparable. I'm lucky enough to say that Ella is still one of my closest friends today. Ella and my childhood best friends have became a huge part of my meso system. In elementary school, I learned that I was a student who struggled with reading. However, I was lucky enough that my third grade teacher, Mrs. Harned, followed the warm demander model. She created several opportunities that allowed me to shift from a dependent to an independent learner. Throughout our individual lessons, I was able to trust Mrs. Harned and take risk. She supported the shift in my mind, so I was a student who was learning in Vygotsky's zone of proximal development. In the words of Radun Sims Bishop, reading should be windows, mirrors, and sliding glass doors. Reading is the gateway to the world around us. I wouldn't be the skilled reader that I am today without the constant love and support I received from Ms. Harned. During these years, I was learning conformity and interpersonal accord through Kohlberg's third stage of development. I was always seeking approval and reward from my parents and friends. You could ask my brother. I was always trying to be the good girl in the eyes of my parents. While I was in elementary school, I also entered Piaget's concrete operational stage. I started to understand that logical reasoning can only be applied to objects that are real or can be seen. In other words, I learned that my favorite stuff hippo could in fact not talk. I also learned that objects can remain the same despite their changes in appearance. In other words, my vanilla birthday cake was the same regardless if the frosting was blue, pink, purple, or red. I continued to move into my later elementary years, I entered Kohlberg's fourth stage of development and started to understand the importance of law and order. I made sure to follow all of the rules all of the time. I was never the child that would talk while the teacher was talking, run around the hallways, or use unnecessary bathroom breaks. In my eyes, the adult was always in the right. I can even find myself using this ideology today. I'd like to say that I'm a big rule follower. When middle school came around, I entered Piaget's formal operational stage. I was able to take my academics to the next level by thinking logically about abstract problems. I was able to strategize, plan, and predict. At this point in my life, every concept I learned was applied to another. This is about the time where I discovered my love for learning and school. Surprisingly, I always enjoyed sitting on my kitchen counter working carefully through all of my homework. While to reward it, I enjoyed completing work that I knew how to complete. I wasn't one that liked to fail or struggle. So when my reading struggles came back to the surface, I relied on my 7th grade English teacher, Mrs. Modloff. Mrs. Modloff worked long hours shifting my fixed mindset to a growth mindset. She started by eliminating the phrase, I can't, from my vocabulary. Mrs. Modloff has also followed Bloom's taxonomy. I went from answering basic level questions to creating my own products and ideas. However, she also made sure to follow Bruner's ideology of social constructivism. Mrs. Modloff challenged me as a learner without overwhelming my brain. Mrs. Modloff strived to push me into an independent and confident reader. As I became a high school student, I entered Erickson's next stage of development. Here's when I started to understand the ideas of identity. This was the time I decided that I needed and wanted to be in the classroom forever. I continued to envision myself as an elementary school educator. I also found myself listening and supporting the people who were important to me. At this point, I decided that I was a listener. As much as I loved being a listener, I found it negatively affecting my mental health. There were many times where I felt like I had nobody to talk to. In my head, I felt like the listener should never have any problems that need fixing. However, when my school decided to add social-emotional learning, I began to feel supported. Mrs. Brenner was my education teacher and biggest cheerleader. She listened, supported, and loved me all the time. She is the reason I'm here at Butler today. With the support of Ms. Brenner and the incorporation of SEL in the classroom, I was able to understand and work through my anxiety. I was able to overcome test anxiety and was able to finally ask and answer questions. SEL has made a huge impact on my mental health and academic performance. COVID had a huge effect on my corona system and my high school years. For nine months, I wasn't able to have any real human interaction with my closest friends. I spent a lot of time with my family and all alone. This really had an impact on my mental health and my relationships. My experience here at Butler has helped me reach esteem on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I've had the chance to meet so many amazing people and create long-lasting friendships. I took the leap of faith and joined a sorority. While I've been in Kappa, I have made the best memories and best friendships. I've spent long hours practicing for lipsticks and participating in sporting events. I've finally been able to become my true self. I'm always smiling and laughing. For the first time in a while, I have found myself being truly happy. I truly see myself loving these people for my whole life. I've had to become comfortable living without my parents and dealing with my emotions all on my own.